Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today we're going to talk about Keith Mitchell. Now, with the Ravens signing Derrick Henry, there's been a lot of talk about how he's the perfect fit to what Baltimore does because Baltimore has been a run heavy team. Uh, ever since we've brought in Lamar, we've been one of the best running teams in the NFL. Uh, part of that has been, you know, Lamar's design runs and scrambling ability. Paired that with Greg Roman's run package, run style, run playbook. And you have put together the perfect storm of a, of a good running team. You bring Derrick Henry in, you had Gus Edwards, you had J.K. Dobbins. You know, all that put together for like a perfect twister for a good running football team. Well, now, Greg Roman's gone. You bring in Todd Munkin. Uh, different philosophy, and you still had a pretty darn good running team before Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry's been this epitome of, the, not, I don't want to say the prototypical running back, but the big bruiser runner runner that he's been known for. Still forms, running over people, and just the toughness of, of, of a good runner. You put what he's done in Tennessee versus what the Ravens have traditionally been for the past five or six years, and it seems like it's the perfect match, you know, the match made in heaven. Not saying Derrick Henry's not going to be successful, and I really think he is, but I think, and like the thumbnail says, I think Keith Mitchell and backs of Keith Mitchell's stature and play style are the perfect back for what Todd Munkin and the Baltimore Ravens are built for now. Um, Keaton Mitchell, his season started late and ended early, but there are so many clips in this shortened season for Keaton Mitchell to give you examples of how he's the perfect back for this new system that Baltimore is trying to implement. And just briefly, I'm going to give you his stats and I'll show you five plays to give examples as to why I think Keaton Mitchell is the perfect back for this new Baltimore system. Uh, last year, Keaton only played in eight games, 47 carries, 396 yards. That, that's it. Only eight games. Again, the season started late. I think he had a foot injury. Then he got hurt in the Sunday night game versus Jacksonville, which I attended, saw it happen, a terrible injury. Um... He had his longest carry was 60 yards. He had an 8.4 yards per carry, which is absolutely nuts. For a back to have, no matter how many attempts you have, for that to be your average is absolutely nuts. He had basically 400 yards in, in eight games, which is which is crazy. Let's get into about five plays to show you how, and, and I'll give you a couple traits to, to say this, and then we look for those traits on film. He's a home run hitter. So he doesn't have to have a boatload of carries to get you a bunch of yards. That's what the Ravens the Ravens need somebody that can can take a basic inside zone and take it to the crib because they need some explosive plays because it's hard as heck to constantly go 12, 13, 14 plays and score. The defense wants you to do that so you can make a mistake and they can get a turnover or make you punt. The more plays you run on on offense, the more opportunity you have to make a mistake. Two, a guy that can catch the ball off the backfield. That's another advantage. We, now, I'm not going to show you any, any of his catches out the backfield, but just know he can catch the ball out the backfield, and if you get him in space, he then in turn goes back to a running back and can do some of those things that we're going to show you. And then three, you just got a, a, another weapon with that speed, a 4-3 kid. So no matter where he gets the ball at, whether it be slow screens, handing it off to him, or throwing it to him in like an angle route or in the flats, or as a check down on the pass concept, you can't coach speed. And hopefully he regains that speed coming off this injury. But let's dive into the film and let's look at these five plays and see why Keith Mitchell is the perfect back for this new Baltimore Ravens scheme. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at, you know, the film. And, but before we do that, 
If you have not done so already, go ahead and drop a like on this video. If you want to help the channel, support the channel, you can do so by joining the Patreon over patreon.com backslash sip the tally. Um, the season is about to get underway. Training camp starts Saturday and Patreon will have more opportunity to get more film and more stuff, more giveaways this season coming up. going to do a lot more for patrons that I've done in the past. They've been a great support. So go over to patreon.com backslash sip the tally and join There's four tiers over there. And whichever one fits you, I would greatly appreciate doing that. Let's start here with, with this first play. And again, you, all the things we talked about, it doesn't have to be some kind of extravagant play. Just look at that. It's just a simple inside zone. He makes a few people miss and, and gets a big, a big play out of it. Now, now him being who he is, is a big part of it. But another big part of it is, and I thought about doing a, a film on this guy and, you know, individually is this guy right here too. Like, the the scheme is set up for Keaton Mitchell, but it's also changing for Lindebaum also. So Lindebaum and Mitchell kind of are uh, synonymous with, you know, doing or changing of the guard, so to speak. But we're going to stick to Mitchell for this one. I'll double back and work on some stuff for Lindebaum. But just with Keaton Mitchell, this is just simple inside zone. And coming downhill... And just that, that little gap right there. And all we need at this point is for somebody to get to this linebacker because everybody on the front level is taken care of. If somebody can just get in this guy's way, you don't even have to block him. Just get in his way. And if it times up just right when Keaton Mitchell hits it, they're off and running. And you see where he kind of takes himself out of the play by coming way over here? And at this point, it's, it's just... It's great. It's, I'm going to say it's greatly blocked because Zeitler has got the wrong leverage, but Keaton Mitchell's covered the ball up, and now I can just take off running. And it's simple stuff. That's what that's what the zone do for you. What it, what inside zone and outside zone does for you, when one of those, if you can get the front guys blocked up, when one of those backers overcompensates or overruns or picks the wrong gap, because I'm not sure why this linebacker plays for Lamar, but I guess Lamar at this point, is a bigger threat because Keith Mitchell's a unknown person at the time. So he was like, well, I'm just going to play Lamar. And he jumps over there to get Lamar and leaves the wide open for Keith Mitchell. And having Lamar on your team does that as well. This is a nice pickup. One of the reasons why he averaged eight yards a carry, because he didn't get, even though I, you know, in the intro, I said he had played eight games and got 400 yards. That don't seem like a lot. But the kid don't have a lot of carries either. I should have mentioned his carries. He don't have a lot of carries. This right here versus the Bengals. Same play. Inside zone. The ability to bend the back. This is just inside zone again. You see the same blocking. Tyler Lindebaum taking care of the interior guy. You see the linebackers. See, uh, who is this? Um, the assassin... Um, this guy right here, the one that don't like to tackle right, Logan Wilson. See him, watch him try to get in this gap right here. And you see Keith Mitchell going to see it, and he's just going to take it and bend it back that way. This guy right here has to respect, has to respect Lamar, and that's the gap that Keith Mitchell's going to bend it through. See right there? Now, he's one-on-one -on -one with Lamar out here. So he, he got to respect that, and then Keith Mitchell's just going to bend it back to the open gap. Simple football. That's why inside zone, you don't have to be this big, powerful back. You just got to have great vision. And now speed takes over. Make him miss. I'm outrun 23. Get some blocks downfield by uh, Odell and, and Nelly. Good. I mean, you don't have to be this big. You just got to have good vision and then let your, your instincts take over. And the speed really helps. It really, really helps. Now, this is versus pick, uh, not Pittsburgh, versus since, since, since I'm calling every team in the division, but the right one. Cleveland, one of the better defenses and statistically ranked number one. That's a little draw. Now, look at this point. Everything's blocked up. You see the gap opening up to Keith Mitchell's left on screen, right? And watch what he does with it. This one, we talked about that speed. This is one of those things you can't coach. 
you can't coach this aspect of a player's game. Like he's not touched at all. Made Grant Delpit just ran, just destroyed the angle on Grant Delpit. Martin, not Martin Emerson destroyed that angle. Now, whoever this is right here, don't stand a chance. Like, you know, you think you can catch it, but you can't coach speed. And he's in space at this point. You can just forget about it. That's Thorn Hill, I think. Or whoever that is. Just the speed aspect. You get him in space, and that's he, he can run full speed. You can forget about it. You can completely forget about it. And that's these these explosive plays are things that the Ravens need. So you don't have to constantly go 13, 14, 15 plays. You need a guy that can come in after Derrick Henry or whoever, you know, bust him upside the head for four, five, six yards for five or six plays. Then you get a first down and you hand the inside zone off to Keaton and he go for 30. And you takes it takes the pressure off everybody on offense. Everybody. And the little toss, little toss crack. You see who is that coming in the crack? That is Bateman coming in the crack. You see who is that pulling out front? Macari pulling out front. Likely getting a block on the linebacker. Linderbaum out there in space. And see, that, there's that guy again, Linderbaum. Again, it's tailored for Linderbaum. It's tailored for, for, for Keith Mitchell. You're getting them in space. You see, Linderbaum and Keith Mitchell in space. And look at him. He gets right behind Linderbaum, makes that guy miss. Now he turns the Jets on. Probably one, two minute cuts. So about a 40 yard run. And we're going to end it right here on the, with this one from Seattle. Something simple. Something simple. Now, what I want to say is. This guy right here, in my opinion, was probably our worst lineman last year. Uh, that started. That started. That was our worst lineman that started last year. A lot of Keaton Mitchell's runs came off of behind him. So I would say you, you don't have to have the greatest of blockers when you got a guy with Keaton's caliber that can just take any defensive mistake and burst through the hole and hit it. Because if he gets any sliver of, of daylight, he could be gone just like that. Now, not saying every run is going to be like that, but any sliver of daylight, he can take it and go. And it's simple inside zone again. Simple inside zone. John Simpson got a little push, just a little push. And Ronnie Stanley completely whips. Keith Mitchell got inside. He got by the guy with just a little push from, from Simpson. Now he's in space again. And once you get him in space, that speed takes over. And now an explosive play, just as simple as inside zone, turns into this huge touch. I think it's a touchdown. Yeah, turns into a touchdown. And that's what I'm saying. Like, he, he, this guy don't have to have a bunch of carries. He don't have to have a, a bunch of touches. It, like, 8 to 12 touches a game, whether that be runs or, or catching out the backfield, can turn into... 67 to 80 yards and a touchdown or two. And that's why I think that'll take the pressure off everybody on offense because you can do simple stuff with him and he can make a huge impact on offense. And I just wanted to bring this to you and let you understand why I think he's the perfect back for the system that the Ravens have. And I appreciate you guys for coming out, man. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. So if you like the video, please like the video. If you have not subscribed, please consider doing so. Hit that bell so you can be notified when the rest of these videos drop. Training camp starts Saturday. So um, like, comment, subscribe, share, and I'll see y'all soon, man. Peace and love.